Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia and welcome back to another Better Commandery Guide video. Today, inspired by our new 8 Princess Sima Ai Let's Play, I'll be covering the Commandery of Tang Wu. It's been a while since I made a Commandery Guide video because I had to divert some time to make the 8 Princess lore series, but now with the 8 Princess officially out, you can expect many more Commandery Guide videos coming next week, including a few that will feature the building changes in the 8 Princess DLC. As for this video, we will be focusing on the buildings from the base game, which can be easily adapted to the DLC if you are playing a Sima'ai campaign like me. First off, Tang Wu is located here in southern China. In the base game, only Sun Jian's faction have a good chance of taking this commandery early on in the game. It starts off the game as an abandoned commandery, but by the time you reach it, either Sun Jian or Shi Hui from even farther down south, should have captured it by then. The commandery capital rests on the Pearl River, or Zhujiang, so one of the building slot will be defaulted to the harbor building chain, similar to other commanderies we have covered like Changsha or Dong. In terms of its counties, it has a rice paddy county to the north, a bamboo variety lumberyard to the west, and a livestock farm even farther west of the commandery capital. This makes Tang Wu one of the few commanderies in the game with three counties, and the only commandery with three agricultural specialty counties in the game. This makes Tang Wu one of the most unique commanderies in the game, with a strong focus on peasantry income, as both the bamboo lumberyard and the livestock farm provides peasantry income. I also classified Tang Wu as one of the 12 most lucrative commanderies in the game in my corruption guide video, and now in this guide, I'll get the chance to showcase its true income potential. If you've already seen the county overview guide, then you are probably already familiar with all three counties, but in the case you're new to the channel, I'll briefly go over all three of these county building chains right now. Starting with the Rice Paddy County, the building chain is linear with no branching and essentially provides food in exchange for upkeep costs. Both of these figures will increase as you level up the Rice Paddy County. One thing to note is that the image asset taken here were from a game where it already had the 25% upkeep discount reform active, so all the upkeep costs are 25% lower than what they should be. For example, the max level 5 upkeep for the rice paddy should be 120 gold instead of 90 gold shown here. Next is the bamboo lumberyard building chain, which is once again linear. It provides an increasing peasantry income as you level up. But at level 5, it also adds on a critical bonus of minus 2 construction time for all buildings in the local commandery. This is a huge buff for saving time and money when you're building up your commandery. So I highly recommend you to upgrade the bamboo lumberyard to level 5 first when you capture this commandery. This will help you save time as you upgrade all the other buildings. So it is pretty essential to rush for this if your reforms allows it. Lastly, we have the livestock farm. Before level 5, this building chain is linear and it provides food and peasantry income with no upkeep costs. At level 5, however, there's a slight branching and you have the choice between either more food and less income or less food and more income. For Tang Wu, where the focus is on income generation, I recommend option 5A with its less food and more peasantry income build. Now that we have an understanding of the counties that make up of Tang Wu Commandery, let's start by looking at some builds, starting with the level 4 small city build. The small city is once again an ideal starting point because it unlocks all the building chains and enables most building upgrades to at least level 4, and in the case of most agricultural building chains, it enables the upgrades to level 5. The settlement itself will provide a little bit of peasantry income and commerce multiplier shown here, and consumes 2 food. We will not be concerning ourselves with food for this commandery guide video. As we're gearing it towards income, so we'll be running a large food deficit in this commandery, and will be dependent on our other less lucrative farmland commanderies to be the bread baskets for our empire. As for the specialty counties, I will default them in the beginning to level 3, since these buildings require no reforms or resources to upgrade to level 3. Although in this build, Given how important the minus 2 construction turn buff is, I will be focusing on upgrading the lumberyard as fast as possible before building the rest of our commandery. The first build I will feature here will seem a little bit weird, 
It has us building a private workshop and an inn building and not have any peasantry income other than the 200 peasantry income provided by our level three counties. I also defaulted to the tea house branch of the inn building here as tea is present in Zanke to the west and Changsha to the north. So I feel it's safe to assume that by the time you capture Changwu, you'll definitely have the tea resource for sure. This build utilizes the default harbor building and build up two market and learning buildings to provide a 20% discount for future agriculture buildings. The private workshop here will maximize our discount for the harbor and inn buildings while providing the maximum amount of commerce income multiplier at the lowest cost. If you're tempted to build the market wharf building chain, as it is also a blue building chain providing discount for agriculture buildings, then please refer to our commerce and industry template building guide where I go in depth about how building the private workshop outperforms the marketplace or market wharf building in all situations. So we'll stick to the private workshop building here. This build will, however, not provide the maximum income, but I am featuring it here because it is the easiest and best early game starting build for Cheng Wu if you are playing Sun Jian and capturing Cheng Wu in the early game when you don't have that many reforms. The reason is to achieve this build, you only need the following four reforms and it provides a nice passive income bonus, which I have already included in our previous calculations. If you want to upgrade the bamboo building to level five first, then you will need these five additional reforms. This is quite a bit of reform needed. And with the first build I'm showing you here, the minus two construction turn is not gonna come in as handy because the private workshop upgrades all require just one turn if you just have a simple supervised construction assignment. And since one turn is the minimum for construction time, getting a farther minus two isn't gonna help you much here. However, eventually you want to upgrade all three of your counties to level five and building all the upgraded version to max out your build. To do that, you need the 10 reform shown here. These 10 reform will also unlock all the necessary reforms needed for upgrading your land development and government support buildings to level five, which will be very important uh, for this peasantry income focused commandery. This is a huge investment of reform in the early game. So if you end up getting Tang Wu in the early game, then stick to the commerce focus build I'm showing you here and switch over to a more peasantry heavy build later. However, if by the time you're capturing Tang Wu, you already have all these reform on lock and you're in the mid and late game, then go ahead and build out like so with the harbor building paired up with a level five government support and a level five land development building shown here. Since you have the reforms, you can add on the level five county upgrade and your final income for the small city will be 2,320 gold per turn. Comparing this to a completely upgraded commerce build we showed earlier with the level five county upgrades, you'll see that one incomes maxes out just under 2000 gold. To farther our build, we can upgrade the settlement to a level five city with four building slots now. If you had gone with our commerce build from before, then now is the time to go heavy on peasantry income with a level five land development building in the livestock market of the commandery capital. This upgrade requires you to have the livestock farm and the entrepreneur, which is unlocked from the marketplace building chain. So you need to have one of those built in another commandery. It sells a lot of food. So expect this commandery's food production to go into the negative, but it provides the most peasantry income from a single building at 300. And it also complements the commerce income with a 20% commerce income multiplier. The income for this build will be a tad under 3000, but you can boost it to 3,310 by replacing the private workshop building now with a peasantry income producing tax collection building. This will require the three reforms shown here. Alternatively, if you've already gone down the peasantry income path already, then you simply just need to add a tax collection building here and your income will be just under 3,500. If you have noticed the main driving force of our income is the sky high peasantry base income and the ever increasing peasantry income multiplier. This is the most scalable source of income in the game, since your population itself can passively provide up to 350% peasantry income multiplier. With each 1 million increase in your population, you'll gain 50% more peasantry income multiplier. So as we level up our settlement level, 
we'll see our income multiplier for peasantry continue to increase. This will also make Cang Wu the first commandery and probably the only commandery that I would ever recommend you to upgrade all the way to a level 10 imperial city, as it will increase the as it will help increase the defense against constant rebellions and provide the highest amount of income for us. You'll see this when we get there, but let's continue with a level 7 small regional city build, where all building upgrades are finally unlocked and you gain additional building slot. Here, we have the super standard peasantry commerce build that reaches an income of 4,507 gold per turn. It requires four more blue reforms to upgrade the inn building to level 5, as well as the harbor building to level 5, but it'll also add a bit of more commerce multiplier as well. What is missing here is the private workshop, which can provide a whopping 190% commerce income multiplier at level 5. So let's upgrade the settlement one more time to gain the maximum 6 building slot. Here we see the income reach 5,872 gold per turn. And this is one of the few times where I think 6 building slot is not enough for commandery. There's still a market worth building chain that could boost commerce income by another 150%. And we don't have a slot for any public order fighting buildings. We don't have a slot for any corruption fighting buildings. And we don't have a slot for administrative office, which can provide corruption reduction as well as income. And we definitely don't have any more slots for military buildings, which can take a huge advantage of the five agricultural buildings in this commandery that gives a default 75% discount to military buildings. But we have to make do with the six that we have as it allows for the highest amount of income in this commandery which can go even higher, as I said earlier, if we keep upgrading the settlement level all the way to Imperial City. If you're thinking that this would just make our public order from population get even worse and worse, then don't worry, as we probably already maxed out the public order hit from population, as we have three counties here in this commandery, so that's another 1.5 million to population cap, and at level 8 already, I think we already hit that maximum cap. So the last two upgrades would just be an income bonus for your commandery, as farther increases to population shouldn't impact your public order any farther. The only disadvantage here is it will cost you a bit more food, so you should have other commanderies with just a farmland county focused on food production to help you supply this buildup. At the end of the upgrade, you'll end up with the highest population commander in the game at 9 million and an income of 8,297 gold per turn before any boost from bonuses from other reforms that you could unlock, administrator bonuses, and assignments. If we add in all those, this is easily a 12,000 income commandery at the minimum. Now, for public order issues, you will be required to station an army nearby to farm those rebellions. Garrisoning an army will be a must, as we have no defensive structure or public order structures built. We also have no anti-corruption building built, so probably all this income will disappear into the pockets of our corrupt government officials. But this is not the case. Here is the map of the, all the commanderies in the game to showcase adjacency. There are a total of six commanderies surrounding Cang Wu. They are Wu Ling, Ling Ling, Nan Hai, Zan Ke, Yulin, and Gao Liang. All six of them have a commerce or industry county, so all six of them are ideal places for a state workshop, which means they can be turned into corruption fighting machines. Two of them also made the list of my 12 most lucrative commanderies outlined in my corruption guide in Nanhai and Zanke. So for those two, we will be going the income focused branch of the state workshop, so they will not be providing any corruption bonuses. But since both of them will have plenty of empty slots for the administrative office, and they're not focused on peasantry, therefore you don't need to build three buildings in the gov land development, government support, and tax collection. So you have the empty slot to build administrative office, which will provide you an additional 20% adjacent corruption bonus. So if we look at our math here, administrator in Changwu gives you 30% corruption reduction, Four level four state workshop from the four surrounding commanderies will give you 40%. And if they end up to upgrade to a small regional city, then you have a level five state workshop that gives you 15%, which will boost the corruption reduction to 60. The two administrative office buildings in your income focused adjacent commanderies will bring another 40%. So at the very least, 
you can expect to reach at least 90% corruption reduction without even considering trades, items from your leader, heir, and prime minister. So honestly, like we have said in our corruption guide, corruption isn't the issue in the game, as long as you know what buildings to build and where to build them. At the end, my overall grade for Tang Wu is 5 stars. It's the best peasantry commander in the game. The commerce synergy with the peasantry income and the fact that they have a harbor building will give the commerce 4 stars. It gets 0 star in industry just because it's irrelevant for Tang Wu. Food gets 5 stars because you can actually gear Tang Wu to be a dominant food producer since it has a rice paddy, livestock farm, and the harbor all producing food. But that would be a waste since it's much better providing income. It only has 6 adjacent commanderies, but the qualities of these 6 commanderies are super high as they all synergize well with building a state workshop as they have the right type of counties for it. So I'm going to give it a 4 star. It's not a 5 star because Tang Wu itself can't build any corruption reduction buildings to help out its neighbors. But overall, Tang Wu is a top top tier commander in the game and I can't wait to capture it next in my Sima Ai Let's Play. This concludes our guide. Hope you enjoyed it and learn something from it to add to your game. Our next commandery guide will be next Tuesday, featuring all the building changes in the new 8 Princess DLC, as I will spend most of this weekend playing and researching for that. Please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting on this video to support my channel. I also take requests for guides you want to see on the channel, so drop a comment for that, and I'll get right to it. Thank you for watching, and see y'all next time. Bye!